this year through our work with the facilities plan process, we had a vision statement. We aspire to be a launching point for discovery, creating innovative and adaptive spaces where everyone can explore, imagine, create, and learn on the path of lifelong learning to improve ourselves and our communities. As part of our vision, uh, we have outlined three different focus areas. Uh, the first being to foster early literacy, the second being to build connections, and the third being to inspire lifelong learning. Katie. Yeah. Start video. Okay, thanks. Welcome, Dr. Clark. And through the process, we're working to develop a short and long term facilities plan for the entire district. We're evaluating six different space options as outlined in the strategic plan and requested by our community through the strategic plan feedback process. Those six options um, include looking at the feasibility of modifications for our existing building, both upward and outward, looking at building new space, uh, looking at options in the area of rent, lease, or buying property and or buildings, uh, seeing what's out there in terms of uh, options for shared space, looking at offsite staffing uh, partnerships, as well as working with local developers um, to partner on any uh, feasible options. So just to recap for those of you at home, um, what some of the challenges we're looking to solve. Uh, when we asked our community what one thing they would change or improve, uh, three things repeatedly popped up in all of the responses. The first being space. Folks wanted bigger space. They wanted different space or a new location for space. Second being materials. Uh, our community said, you know, they wanted more um, physical materials in particular. And the third being they want more programs, uh, especially in the area of children's programming. And uh, the latter of the two uh, definitely influence space. And through our process, we've uh, outlined what our needs and current challenges are. Um, and this was done in conjunction using the strategic plan feedback from our community. Um, we've heard that we need a defined and expanded children's area, both to meet that desire for uh, increased children's programming, as well as in our Third Street location to um, better uh, maintain some noise issues. Um, folks would like more programming spaces to hold more programming, more space for materials. Um, and we need adequate staff workspace to be able to serve our community through programs and materials acquisition. Um, that being said, we also, um, from both a staffing perspective and a patron perspective, uh, look to increase collaboration spaces. So study rooms, conference rooms, meeting rooms. Uh, there's a desire for expanded quiet space and uh, a need for increased storage space. So where we're at in our product timeline, um, we started these conversations back in the fall and each month we're tackling a different area of exploration. Um, this month, there's, you'll notice if you've tuned in in previous sessions, um, we did make a slight modification based on some of the ongoing conversations that are in place. So today's uh, session will focus only on rent, lease, buy and sell and we moved um, the existing building evaluations until we have a bit more information that we're waiting on um, to February. So February, um, we'll be talking about uh, developments in the area of shared space, developer partnerships, and then the existing building evaluations. That's in addition um, to getting an overview of what funding options are available um, from Stifel Nicholas, and then with the end goal being to have a review of the draft plan in March. I just threw a lot out there, but I just want to open it up to the floor. Does anyone have any questions up to this point? Um, not a question, just a statement. I just wanted to, when you opened, you said that we had um, talked about what was needed. I would like to just say that that came from our strategic plan. All the items that were mentioned of what the library, what uh, patrons would like to see from the library Correct me if I'm wrong, but I would just like to make it, um, you know, where did that come from? It came from our strategic plan we did in 2019. If that's incorrect, please let me know. 
Uh, yeah, I would just only add and as well as use data, what the data was telling us in terms of what our capacity is. Um, and so it was a, a definite combination of the two. Okay, thank you. As you may or may not know, the Long Range Planning Committee is meeting weekly on Wednesdays at one. That's a public meeting for anyone to join. We're continuing to meet with other agencies and entities. For example, this week, um, we had a great conversation with Windsor Severance Fire Rescue and um, the town of Windsor's Park Rec and Culture to dig into more details about um, potential opportunities for collaborating on, on some shared space. Uh, we continue to dig into those exploration options and analyzing those and bringing those forth. Um, we're very close to wrapping that portion of the plan up. As you noted from the previous timeline slide where February is it, we'll be presenting the last of um, the data for you. And then we're in the midst of uh, um, continuing some conversations uh, and, and looking at what other entities, what other libraries have done in the way of their facility plans, and really digging into the nitty gritty of what we want this final report structure to look like in that final deliverable. So those have been um, kind of ongoing conversations that we've been having uh, since the beginning of December. So tonight, as I mentioned, um, we are looking at the uh, exploration option of renting, leasing, or buying new space. In addition to that, um, we also are uh, briefly touching on um, the feasibility of selling our Main Street property. So uh, as we dig into this particular area, there are some new terms that will be included on the slide that I just want to make sure everyone's on the same page about, about in, in a, excuse me, same page in terms of our common knowledge base. Um, one of the terms that you'll see on some uh, upcoming slides is something called the triple net lease. And that's basically, um, you can see the definition here, but in addition to your rent or um, your lease rate, you also pay taxes, maintenance, and insurance. Um, and that's part of the lease agreement. Another term that you'll see is build to suit, um, and that's where you work with a developer um, or a landowner to develop a custom built facility that you then lease. Any questions on those new terms? Hi. Sorry, I've got multiple monitors up, so if it looks like I'm staring off, it's just because I'm looking at your faces <laughs> 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 on my other screen. Um, so digging in, uh, the first property we want to share with you is what we're labeling the Ash Street property. So um, if you, you've ever driven by kind of behind Taco Bell um, and you visited Mountain Wood Pet Hospital, um, it's this building back in here. That was the best photo I could capture from Google. And it's located from an aerial view. You can see here, here's Ash Street. Um, Windsor Family Dental, Pizza Hut, Taco Bell. So it's back in here with um, some other businesses in this sort of mini business park. Any questions about getting the mental picture of where this, where this um, property is located? Can you show where the rec center is in, in conjunction to that property? Um, I, this is a static image, but the rec center, if you, see my mouse, the rec center is basically due north. So it'd be like up in here. <laughs> so this building is just over 4,000 square feet. It is currently a commercial office building. Um, it appears to have been a um, medical office building at some point in time based on the current layout. We felt that this and by we, I mean the Long Range Planning Committee felt this would be ideal for a potential administrative hub. So a location that would have plenty of room for staff offices, a boardroom, materials processing. So not necessarily um, a public facing space. Um, it is a definitely, uh, it has the ability to be configurable. Um, it has two floors. Unfortunately, right now it is not ADA accessible. Um, and there are six bathrooms. So plenty of bathroom space for everyone. 
Right now, the asking price is $775,000, uh, $100,000. Um, however, uh, the property has been on the market for several years. There is the option to both purchase outright as well as lease at $1,250 a square foot um, with an allowance for tenant improvements. Uh, Right now, we don't have a good idea of renovation costs um, because you'll see when we flip into the worksheet um, that one of the questions that we have uh, outlined of things if we wanted to pursue this property is to have an engineer evaluate the structural integrity of the, of the facility to see if it could sustain uh, um, the, the heavy weight of shelved books and be a storage, a storage center for uh, our excess materials. Um, so uh, that's why it's TBD, because that could be a fairly significant cost. Um, things to consider in, in the costs, uh, not only the annual maintenance, utilities, et cetera, but as we look to have multiple facilities in our district across multiple locations, um, we would need to have a courier service that would be uh, running things back and forth to uh, the various libraries or library. Oops, let me uh, throw this link into the chat. Um, if you have the packet up, it's also the next page in the packet. And I'm just going to open that up right here. So the, for those of you tuning in for each exploration item that we bring forth to the board for consideration, we have completed a worksheet to be able to compare as best as possible apples to apples and have a final spec sheet. All of these are available in the packets um, that correspond with the discussion items. Um, so uh, just to review uh, the scope, if you wanna look at the, uh, the listing spec sheet, you can click through um, to that link. Um, we've just reviewed the costs. One thing to note, um, the common area maintenance is 3200 um, So in terms of service and how, what value add this would bring to the district, it would um, potentially allow us room for our excess collections, so uh, we wouldn't have to deaccession materials uh, as quickly. Um, this would allow us a centralized administrative hub um, to position us to be a, a successful multi-branch system. It would free up space at the Windsor Severance Library by moving some staff and um, processing out of the Windsor Severance Library and we could convert that to patron use. So really maximizing that property. Um, and it allows us some different programming options. So for example, we could have a dedicated recording space for virtual programs. We could have a dedicated boardroom. Um, it would just expand our capacity. Um, in terms of how this would really impact staffing, um, this would allow us to move the 10 staff members out of the Windsor Severance Library, um, that ratio kind of earmarked um, to afford more patron focused space. Um, we would have the ability to provide more quiet and collaboration space for staff to be able to work. Um, a few considerations, uh, we would, uh, have a potential of having staff travel between buildings and having a courier service um, to keep the, the flow of materials, mail, et cetera, um, going. Um, as mentioned, um, it allows more time for materials before they're deaccessioned, um, providing you know, more depth of a collection to our users, um, more staff space, um, sets us up for success for a multi-branch system. And if we purchase this uh, building, it would add an asset to our financials. Um, some things to consider, uh, it does need some significant renovations for us uh, to be able to move in. Um, it would increase our operating costs. Um, and uh, as we mentioned that it may be an ideal space for processing the materials, but that really only makes sense if we are a multi-branch system. Um, and uh, it is not ADA accessible. So that could potentially be um, an increased cost for uh, the renovations. Um, ultimately, in the bigger picture, this would allow us to scale um, 
over time in terms of the overall district sets us up for success, success like I mentioned, as a multi-facility um, district. Um, however, um, there, uh, while there's plenty of space there, um, it is finite. We're not able to expand um, outward by any means. So um, we're limited with the space that's, that's there. Um, it would by moving administrative functions out of the Windsor Severance Library, we would free things up for patrons and we could expand efforts in all of our three focus areas. Um, we would be able to um, increase our collection size and, and provide more options um, to support the area of lifelong learning and early literacy. Um, and we would just be able to have the infrastructure in place to meet our vision and mission at a larger scale, particularly as our community grows. Um, and it addresses almost every single one of our um, existing needs or challenges. Um, so we identified a few questions um, if we wanted to pursue this option that we would want to have answered. Um, if uh, we would be permitted to um, park oversized vehicles, aka the bookmobile, uh, uh, in the parking lot. Um, uh, more clarification on the uh, common area maintenance fee. Um, and then like, me like I mentioned er earlier, um, what is the structural integrity of uh, the, the building in terms of being able to house materials? All right, so I'm gonna- I had a question. Yes. So my question is, would we have to be ADA compliant to the upstairs if that was office space was was not open to the public so long as we had an office for anyone who needed the ada that's a great question. I'll, I'll tackle that one and that's a great question if the area is not open to the public that does limit your uh, your difficulty uh, uh, or the the exposure there under the ada if the if the public isn't uh, invited to the second floor uh, the the one catch that you'd have there would be if there were employees that were located there, and let's say an employee had an injury, and that employee needed to to be able to access their work, there have to be reasonable accommodations uh, that would be have to be made to be able to ha have them access their workplace, and also with regard to uh, well, one of the comments was uh, uh, potential for a uh, dedicated boardroom. If we were having uh, public meetings uh, at that boardroom, they would they would need to be ADA accessible. Thank you, Bill. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right. Moving right along. As we've done with the other options, I'm going to ask you to fill out the ranking form. Where is it? I am copying it into the chat. I don't have to do it. All right, I will send this out via email afterwards. So that way you can take it at your leisure. I will give everyone a few minutes to complete that form. Please let me know if you're having access issues. Katie, I can email it to the I can email it to the board right now too. Great. Thank you, bud. I'm online doing mine. I'm fine. I'll go ahead and email it to everybody. If you're already taking care of it, no need to worry. Okay. And if not. When do you when do you want it filled out? If I'm sending the link right now, but I think you've got time. If you could complete it by Monday, that would be ideal. I can complete it. Wonderful. Thank you. Sent.
And when you're finished, if you just want to raise your hand and that that will in the little raise your hand button and then that'll give me a signal that you're done. Hey, bud, did you say you emailed it to everyone? Sorry, I sent it to the direct board. I can send it to everybody that's on this call in a moment. My apologies. Oh. Well, if I don't need to do it, that's fine. Hey, we take it. Give me just a minute. Yeah, feedback, feedback from everyone is welcome. One to five, which is the best, which is the worst? Uh, one being least, five being best. Scott, I went ahead and forwarded it to you. It's waiting for you in your inbox. Thanks, sir. And just a reminder, hit the raise your hand button if you are finished. That way I know that. I see you, Rochelle. <laughs> but there's an actual button too that stays on your screen. <laughs> see that button but I am done oh, perfect sorry be at the bottom of your where you can get the chat I filled it out and submitted it I hope you haven't wonderful thank you
Scott, were you able to access it? Okay. I am done. Wonderful. I'm getting ready to raise my hand. <laughs> Sorry for rushing you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to get back to that shared screen that has the slides. Um, there's something that says swap screen with video. I'm going to defer to Bud because he's all things tech. What device are you on, Rochelle? Um, on a MacBook Air. I, after I submitted, then it just says discussion criteria ash street, your response has been recorded, but I can't get back to the slides. Uh, can you click on your doc? Can you click on the, the Zoom icon? Yeah, on your MacBook, uh, try command tab until you see the Zoom icon. Okay, command tab. And then the zoom is the blue square with the camera. Oh, that totally did it. Wow. Boom. There we you go. Know what you're doing. Happy to help. How are you doing, Frank? <laughs> All right. So I'll go on if you, you can tune me out if you're still wrapping up the last of your thoughts or you can feel free to re revisit the form. Uh, at a later point in time. Um, thank you for your feedback on that particular option. Moving into the next option, we're labeling the Diamond Valley property um, because it's in the Diamond Valley area. So this is the property in question. It is located near um, Fusion Fit, uh, the Windsor Charter Academy. You can see it's kind of up in here. Um, and it's just off of Automation Drive, just to give you a bit of perspective there. And then here's um, Diamond Valley, so which will be the new home for Future Legends Sports Park. So this is a very large space. Um, it's almost 28,000 square feet, and it is right now an industrial warehouse. Um, we have the option uh, to lease uh, the 28,000 square feet or purchase the entire building for 62,000 square feet. Um, we toured this space with Windsor Severance Fire Rescue and um, the Town of Windsor Parks Rec and Culture Department because we recognize that this is likely a space that is too large for just us at this point in time. But we do feel that it is, could be ideal for an administrative hub. Again, staff offices, a boardroom, materials processing um, and storage. Um, and it is completely unfinished on in the inside. It's, it's literally an industrial warehouse. So it is a blank canvas. We could make it whatever we want it to be. Uh, as for costs, uh, it's just over 8 million for the total building. Um, and right now, uh, in addition to the um, 28,000 square feet, it's kind of in the middle. And then there's two existing tenants on either side, one of them being Bestus. Um, for the lease, it is $10 per square foot um, as it is now. If it were to be finished, the lease rate would be more. Um, it is a triple net lease. Uh, renovation costs are unknown, but um, in talking with the broker and the property representative, um, they felt like $75 to $100 per square foot um, would be kind of a ballpark of what to expect in order to finish it into um, that kind of office space. Um, things to consider, uh, obviously the annual maintenance, um, utilities, and then we would need a courier service in between our buildings. And by courier service, um, not necessarily um, uh, referring to like an actual private entity courier service, um, just noting that we would need to set up a system in place. It could be a staff member that runs mail back and forth or materials. Um, 
Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I realize that there's an error on the slide. It's not 8.1 thousand. It is 8.1 million. <laughs> so, I mean, 8.1 thousand would be a heck of a deal. Sorry for that error. Um, just to clarify, thank you for uh, thank you to Ron Dunworth for noticing that. Um, and sorry about that. I will get that fixed ASAP. I mean, heck, I would have bought that space for eight thousand dollars. <laughs> Uh, sorry to write that. a check today. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Sign me up. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, let me dig into the worksheet. I'll she's, pop up. Is it ten dollars a square foot, right? Yes, the ten dollars per square foot is right. <laughs> I know that for sure. Um, but again, that's for uh, industrial warehouse. So if it's finished, um, which it, it depends on what it is finished for, they did say that it would be more. So that would have to be negotiated once we um, determined how we would finish the space. Katie, just a quick question yeah. on that. Um, that would not be the lease would not be $175 a square foot. That would be the cost to do the, the finishing, just oh, for yes. clarification. Yes, okay. that was yeah that's in line with the renovation costs um which we may be able to negotiate some sort of tenant improvement allowance uh it seemed like things were negotiable but um it would likely that tenant improvement costs would be likely on the lower end um in line with some other tenant improvement um costs that we've seen and you'll see in some future slides more on the around the ten dollar per square foot um mindset so we would be undergoing some significant um, investment in this pro property to finish the space in addition to the lease rate. Uh, so flipping to the worksheet, um, as I mentioned, it is a significant amount of space, uh, 28,000 square feet for the leasable section or 62,000 total. Um, and if you want to click through, you can view the um, actual listing or the listing brochure, which gives a bit more information about the property and kind of the business park area in general. Um, oh, I had it right here. <sighs> Dang it. <laughs> I missed that. Um, but uh, as we mentioned, um, in addition to the lease or purchase rates and the renovation costs, um, we would be looking at maintenance, utilities, and uh, staff mileage, potentially reimbursement in the long term. Um, it would be ideal, like the other um, previous solution for an administrative hub, definitely room for excess collections. Um, it would free up space at the, our current library. It could provide all sorts of additional programming options. Um, and one thing that um, we've been talking with in our very high level conversations right now with potential partners for this property is, you know, could we have, you know, shared rooms, shared meeting spaces, things like that, um, because we all need a boardroom, we all have boards. Um, and so could we have a shared boardroom um, with the appropriate technology so it wouldn't be each one of us having our own boardroom so that could provide some um, some sharing opportunities, um, as well as maximizing that space. Um, you know, uh, in terms of staffing, it would allow us to move out those 10 staff members from the Windsor Severance Library to maximize space for patrons, um, as outlined uh, with ratios proposal. It would require staff travel between buildings, um, which would likely mean we would need a courier service between buildings. Um, this space would be ideal for a co-located space with a variety of partners. Um, it is a large empty shell that we can really make our own. Um, uh, they have three front doors right now and four dock doors. Um, it, the, the receiving dock is very generous. Um, so it would be, in theory, if we wanted to have that be a bookmobile parking or even just shipping and receiving, um, it would be a big improvement from where we are now with the you know, five staff member backing her up sort of situation. I exaggerate, it's not five, but it is two. <laughs> and there's about five inches on either side that they have to clear out to get the bookmobile in, in and out. 
Um, this would set us up if we were to uh, have an administrative hub um, for success as a multi-branch system. Um, the site is located in the geographic center of our district. Um, so for if we're looking at build out in future locations in, you know, in Severance or West Greeley, it would um, be an ideal position for that. Um, it would allow us, if we store materials in this facility, um, more time before materials are deaccessioned, allowing more depth of our collection and breadth, definitely more space for staff, um, and it could be a potential asset if we went the purchase route. Uh, a few things to consider with this proposal. Um, as I mentioned, it is uh, right adjacent to the Future Legends Sports Complex. Um, and so there, we're going to see a lot of change in this area over the next two years. Don't know if you see, but saw, but uh, was it this, or, no, was it Monday or Friday last week? They announced um, they've got a soccer team coming in. So, and they're hoping to have that soccer team up and running was it 2022, fall of 2022, I think. Um, so there's, there's gonna be some significant development um, in this area. Uh, as with any of these options uh, that we're looking at, this would increase our operating costs. It would be an additional um, facility to maintain. Um, having a processing center or central processing center only really makes sense if we intend to be a branch system. Uh, the neighborhood within which this is located is primarily industrial, um, so that's just a consideration. Um, and you know, this is a this is a massive space. So, uh, from a financial stewardship uh, aspect, it would likely behoove us to partner with other entities um, to share this space, which, um, in and of itself. Um, there are some complexities uh, with uh, structuring a lease with multiple partners and or purchasing a space and leasing it. Um, that would likely be the IGA route. Um, it's been done before. Um, for example, the town of Windsor uh, previously leased space from the school district and a long-term lease agreement with them through an IGA. Uh, right now, the, uh, the building only has heat. There is no AC. So we would have to um, uh, install AC um, and there are definitely some significant costs associated with the build out of the space, not just um, improving the aesthetics, it would be completely building it from the ground up. It's basically just a slab with walls. <laughs> so in terms of scalability, um, it would allow us as a district to scale over time by having that administrative hub. Um, if we purchased this space um, as uh, leases ended uh, with tenants on either side, um, we could expand into those areas as we needed um, for growth. Um, very similar, and I, I, I'm not intending to skip over this by any means, but you'll see these items repeated throughout um, all of the options we're looking at because it's the same scenario, so to speak. Um, so I'm, for sake of time, I'm not gonna repeat these. Um, and the, the solutions that we would be meeting with this property are also the same as the Ash Street. Um, so we do have some significant questions that would need to be addressed before making the decision to pursue this option. Uh, the first being um, what if any partners are willing to commit to this project um, and then uh, we would want to determine if there are any legal implications to be aware of um, if we were to purchase the space with existing tenants um, that have multi-year leases. Any questions or feedback? Have we heard any information? I, I missed the last meeting um, yesterday. And what is the position of the uh, uh, Park and Recs and um, Fire District on this particular building? Have they given us any feedback? I will defer to Anne. So uh, we did meet with them yesterday. And, um, you know, they're. Uh, 
both of them are interested, but they also have lots of things going on. And since we're not, you know, 100% sure until our facilities plan is over, that this is something we would want to do, they are interested. The fire chief said he would bring it up to his board. Uh, Tara indicated that they are looking at all of their spaces right now to see what the best move is. So it's not that they're disinterested, it's that they don't feel that this would be the right time for them to, you know, commit but they would like to have continued conversations, especially if we move in this direction. Thank you, Anne. that clarifies that for me. Thank you. My knee jerk reaction, not having seen it or anything, is it's too big and too expensive as a lease. If it was a purchase the whole darn thing and turn that into our big centralized library, the location's pretty cool, but I don't know if we can handle that. So it almost seems to me like it's biting off more than we can chew right now. I know Ron Dunworth in particular, and hey, correct me if I'm wrong here, Ron, you know, tends to um, lean more toward the purchase rather than lease to have something to show for it. And if my math is right, that's a pretty expensive lease for a whole lot of space that the public doesn't get to use. Well, that's, that's why we would have to have partners, Rochelle. Um, yeah. We wouldn't want the space just for the library because 27,000 square feet is way too much for administrative and storage space for us. And so the, the leasing costs would be shared with the fire district who also needs office space. Um, and they need some other spaces like a training room and are interested in a shared board room. So it would, be ha it would have to be a shared, it wouldn't be just us. Rochelle, you're, you're right too, so as I added, that to add to the complexity, somebody would have to own it and somebody would have to manage the property, somebody would have to be the landlord. And I think those are kind of things out of the scope of our our library district. I think our focus has to be back into uh, doing library stuff instead of becoming a landlord or landlord property manager uh, to, to that extent. So, Well, we'd be sharing the lease. The landlord would be the building owner. Well, right. that would be us, or if we want to share the lease, I would. I mean, it's still, still. No, we can't buy place. it, and that I don't want to buy the thing. Part. No, yeah, we're well, a few, we're a few dollars short. And I don't. I just think I think it's wonderful we're having the conversations. I don't think it's going to meet our timeline at this juncture. That's essentially what we agreed about yesterday in our in our staff meeting is that to keep it open and on the schedule as the partners in the community start to clarify their needs a little better and we can always revisit it regardless of where we're stat where we're at in regards to an annex facility but it's just uh, not baked enough to even consider it right at this moment yeah but i think the important uh important takeaway is that we are looking at how we can maximize taxpayer investment across multiple government entities. We have multiple players at the table, willing and eager to engage in conversations. And you know, the immediate need we might not be able to, to satisfy through a co-located facility, but potentially more of a longer term towards the end of the plan, it may be more feasible um, to, to figure out a solution that could meet the needs of a variety of entities. So I think it, it's a, a huge um, testament to our partnerships with the other entities that we're, we're talking, we're having some serious dialogue. And, you know, it's, I think it's something that would be beneficial for all parties involved. Any other questions or feedback before we um, evaluate and do a gut check on this? Looks hey, like Katie, Scott. I got, my, I got my hand up. <laughs> All right. What do you got, Scott? Okay, so I got two questions, but kind of clarity questions. On this, on this presentation, unless I'm not seeing it, is the severance option in this presentation tonight? No, it was last work session. Okay, so that was a separate one. It's not part of this one. And then on the survey, I had one other question too. I found myself when I was taking that survey question and answering those questions, some of them I was answering thinking there was really no other choice maybe. So I was wondering, you know, is it gonna be a survey at the end of this where we get to make choices on all of the options 
and what we think which option is better once we know what all the options are in our head. We, you know will, I mean? be having, we will be having discussions at a larger scale, what that particular format, um, I have not decided yet, um, but I believe our work with the long range planning committee will be to make recommendations for the board's reaction in terms of how the, the solutions of the jigsaw puzzle will come together. So without that, you're just gonna kind of tally up the stats on each survey and see how it breaks out then, right? Yes, the, the, the initial gut check surveys will be used to help inform um, recommendations. All right. And by Severance proposal, do you mean the, the proposal from the town of Severance or are you uh, referring to the flame project? No, 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 the town of Severance. Okay, the town of Severance proposal, yeah, yeah is um, a session. Yeah. And you're welcome to that, all that information in the worksheet. It can be found in the December packet on the library board webpage. Bud, would you mind throwing that link in the chat for Scott? I'm pretty sure uh, I have. Not, a, not at all. Give me just a moment. Thank you very much. If, you, if you've got it, though. Oh, well, if you've got it, you're good. Yeah. Well, thanks, Katie. I was just thinking, you know, some, at some point, a question of, well, what proposal, which one did you like the best overall, you know, which Correct. one feels the best and that kind of thing is what I'm getting at. But yeah. I'll be patient. I'll just keep, I'll wait. All right. Well, Thank here's you. the form you can dig into. Um, but yeah, Scott, we will be having kind of that, that summary conversation. Um, I think one important factor will be uh, the financial presentation next month. Um, because I, I don't think we can really evaluate what's an effective solution until after we know what our financial options are. Cool. Hey, thanks, Katie. Yeah, no problem. Um, all right, I threw the form in the chat. Feel free to access that. We'll give you a few moments. Um, put your hand up or do a little emoji action, um, your reaction to indicate when you're done or just give a holler in the chat or verbally to let me know you're ready to move on. Whatever and your if pleasure. You were waiting for, <laughs> if you were waiting for that link to come an email, I'm throwing it in there now. Thank you so much, bud. Sure. When should I expect it to show up? I believe Bud is working on getting that sent out now. So it's it's sent. So we're dependent now upon the internet and the satellites and the space and the government and all the things that conspire to make our bits come to us when we wish for them to. I got it. So this is kind of a cookie cutter type of uh, survey, isn't it? It doesn't really focus on things individually. This is kind of a catch-all survey. Good. Correct. So wanted to, um, as much as possible, compare apples to apples as we're evaluating these. Um, so we're asking the same questions. You'll notice that uh, the uh, evaluation areas are from um, are those areas that were outlined in your, I believe it's one of the facilities policy. I can't remember off the top of my head which particular one it was. Um, so that way we're evaluating to your policy criteria. I threw in a couple other options um, or questions you'll see at the top of the survey questions and how um, the proposal relates to the mission and vision, um, meeting the needs and challenges. Um, so those are in addition to um, the, the policy criteria, which were written more from the mindset of constructing a new facility. So that's why I've thrown in the option of not applicable.
and I'm going to have to take off um, in about uh, 15 minutes or so. Okay. Feel free when you have a chance to fill out the surveys um, when Bud sent them through via email at your convenience. I was asking a question and I was on mute. Um, can you go ahead and send me or have Bud send me the one? Because once, once I'm off, I can't get these. Can I? Um, you should be able to access the hyperlinks in the packet. Let me know okay. if the links aren't working in the packet. Okay, I'll check that right now. Thank you. Yeah, if you click on C form, you should be able to access it from there. But let me know. Okay. Yeah, I've got the packet right here. On my other computer. You know, sometimes when the PDFs get made, they sometimes the links don't always pop be over. I'm seeing uh, I'm seeing mixed results on those C form links in the in the packet, but we're sending them out one by one. Kendra to the board. I'll continue to do that for the rest of the evening. So oh, there'll be a, oh, thank you, Bud. Okay, then absolutely. I will get that done. Yeah. So I'll I'll the subject will be the name of the property and the link will be in the email okay yeah because i'm not getting it up on my um surface it, it looks like most of them are good but not all of them so i would just trust the email i always trust you bud well that's dangerous but i appreciate it Kendra, <laughs> thank you just checking in dr clark how are you doing i filled it out and submitted it Lovely, thank you so much. I think that's everybody then. Holler if I need to take a breath before moving on to East Point. All right, East Point um, is a, it kind of touches on two areas. One, the renting, leasing, buying option, but it also is a result of our direct outreach to a local developer, Chris Ruff. Um, so we're looking at the East Point development. Uh, so that's off of 257 and 392 right now. Um, the Doug's Diner Strip is uh, the most recognizable portion of it that's been built out. Here's the map. So we're looking at, if I can get my flag thing or to go away, but we're looking at this area. So the cemetery is right here in Windsor. Come and go human being. And then when you flip off the roundabout there at Doug's Diner right in here. So, so this is- That right? circle where it's gonna be that you've drawn? Yes, roughly, yeah. So this is a, a drawing of, of the site plan here. Um, and so it could, well, there are several buildings or plots open. Um, the one in particular that we were discussing with him um, is this building to the south. Am I getting my directions right? South of Doug's Day Diner. I might be screwing up my directions. No, I think you're, that's right, Katie. <laughs> I am directionally challenged. <laughs> so just a heads up. All right. So this, um, in talking with uh, Mr. Ruff, we would be looking at potentially about a 5,000 square foot retail space. Um, again, ideal for an administrative hub. So the staff offices, boardroom, um, potentially materials and processing and storage. Uh, he was open to a variety of options, including a build to suit, um, uh, just a, a lease once it's been built out, as well as a purchase. So if we were looking at a build to suit, it would be approximately 80 to $100 per square foot for us, us to finish that space. Um, uh, well, obviously all of this is negotiable. Um, he, he would offer approximately a $30 per square foot tenant allowance to finish the space. Um, if we were to uh, lease this space, um, it would likely land in the range of 18 to $24 per square foot with a triple net lease. 
Um, and if we were to purchase it, it would range somewhere between $8 and $14.50, depending upon um, which, uh, which building or which lot we would actually lease and or purchase. Um, things to consider in that cost range, um, as mentioned with previous proposals, um, annual maintenance utilities, um, and then a courier service would be needed between buildings. So give me just- hey, Katie, can you go back to that really quick? I, I just want to understand the numbers a little better. Yeah. You say purchase $8 to $14 a square foot. Is that for a finished building or for a piece of land? Uh, uh, that I don't know off the top of my head, but I can look into that. Anne, do you remember? I, I don't remember, Katie. I would say, I would venture to say that that is ready for tenant finish. I don't, there might be some plumbing, that kind of thing in there, but that would be for a rough tenant spend, uh, tenant finish. Um, Scott, what is your opinion? Uh, construction is a couple hundred bucks a foot. Well, purchase price, you know, you got what? It's, it can't be purchase price per square foot. Yeah, that's so. I mean, the bill to suit means eight to hundred dollars a square foot finish. That would that, be the, the, the cost for us to finish the space. Okay, so we still really don't have the price for the space per square foot, is my question. I, I, I don't see that really as a purchase line item or in that picture because I, I don't think we could buy that a finished building, even a shell, without a tenant finish for fourteen fifty a square foot. No, I believe the tenant finish would be on top of that. Yeah, that doesn't. I still think. Yeah, could, could you take that back to to Mr. Hunt and and ask for validation on what the yes. building costs would be per square foot? Not not to, I mean, the, the numbers just don't really fit because. Uh, would, would that number be just the dirt? That's kind of the question. Because you were buying the dirt, that lot. That I, would make more sense. That would make more sense to me too. So I, I think it's a great site and anything else, but I think we just really, uh, we have to reconcile that number with the reality, which would be. Well, what, actually, just, I might be able to answer that question right now. I okay. yeah. it, it, it still runs a couple hundred plus per square foot to build something. It's here. Yeah, so we have to have the property price, we have to have the build price, the construction price, and then tenant finish. Those would be the three components of the opportunity. Mm. Oh, I see what you're looking at. Okay, maybe that has it. This was where I pulled the pricing. That's a lot price. That's a lot price? Yeah, the asking price right there. Oh, I guess you can't see my cursor yeah right where you're at those are the asking prices for the lot okay so, so i mean if we could just get a little more clarity on what it would cost to build a five what he would charge to build a five thousand square foot building mm -hmm. then we would add that to the asking price and that would give us a better understanding of what uh what the expense side would be to do this no. oh uh. Awesome. Any other questions? And that and that build is suited one hundred to eighty to one hundred is probably interior. Yes, it is interior. That would be our our cost burden is what right. he asked for us to finish it. And that's but that then you also have to um, think through what did he say uh, that he would offer likely somewhere in the thirty dollars per square. Foot foot for interior finish allowance and that triple net price is probably what another seven or eight dollars a foot uh i'm not sure that's that's the one that kills you you know ron maybe maybe five dollars a foot you know uh no i don't but i it, it does look somewhat uh expensive I, I think if we could just get him to Provide us with a set of numbers, Katie, that are specific to our needs, which would be price of the dirt, then the price of the build, and then the finish. And triple net charges. And, and triple net. Thanks. Well, our, we, we wouldn't have triple net if we had bought it. That's, no. You're right. Okay. But that, that was an example on the lease term, though. Yeah. So 
we, he, I think Scott's right in asking for validation of that price if we were to lease it on the triple net. Yeah. Will do. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Um, again, I'm going to just breeze through the worksheet because it's almost identical in terms of service impacts because it's the same solution as the previous two worksheets. Um, it is the same uh, staffing impacts as the previous two worksheets. Uh, in terms of pros for this proposal, um, there are multiple options uh, for requirement. Um, like the previous two proposals that would set us up for success as a multi-branch system. It is located in the center of the district and kind of on a main thoroughfare. So hopping on 257 would allow us to get to Greeley or Severance pretty quickly. Um, it would allow us more time before materials have to be deaccessioned, um, providing for a uh, more depth and breadth of our collections, more staff space, um, and if we went the purchase route, it would provide an asset on our financials. Um, a few things to consider with this proposal. It is very close to the Future Legend Sports Complex. I suspect um, traffic will get quite congested with the, the projections that they have in terms of annual visitors. With any new facility, this would increase our operating costs. And like the previous two proposals, um, having material, a central materials processing center only makes sense if we have a multi-branch system. Um, in terms of where this is located, it is located within a commercial retail complex. So um, while there is uh, one uh, tenant right now in that Doug's space that is more of an office space, um, you know, in terms of fit, is it maybe the best fit in terms of neighbors? I don't know, but just something thing to think about. Uh, scalability, uh, it would be limited um, for future expansion unless we were to purchase multiple lots. Um, again, it would allow us to scale over time. Um, the solutions in term, or how does the solution meet our mission and vision? They're the same as the previous two proposals that we brought forth, as well as the existing needs and or challenges. Um, the committee didn't have any questions at this time, but I will bring forth the questions about the pricing and get more clarification for you there. Any other questions and or feedback on this proposal? Hey, so just for clarity one more time, sorry. So that last one was really primarily just to lease it, right? because we don't know what any purchase prices are yet. A uh, no purchase price, it, like that's what I'm getting clarification on, but it is an option. Okay. As far as location and um, size, I thought it was one of the best, better proposals that we've had. <clears throat> Thank you for that feedback, Dr. Clark. I just threw the form link in the chat window for the panelists and Bud will send it out via email here shortly. If you could indicate either in the chat or through the raise hand feature when you're done with the form, that would be greatly appreciated.
I will be taking off at this point and I will get the rest to you, Katie, ASAP. Thank you, Kendra. Have a good evening. You too. Bye, Kendra. Bye. Thanks, Rochelle. Okay, I submitted mine. Thank you, sir. And I just want to double check with Frank, Scott, and Ron Dunworth that your hand raises are current hand raises and not existing hand raises. Mine's for real. Okay. I'm done. Perfect. How about you, Frank? Good to go? All right. Thank you. So last but not least in the rent lease buy category is a project called The Flame. Mm. Just one thing to note um, before we dig into this project. Uh, this, uh, uh, Scott, would you prefer the term property representative or property owner? Well, uh, you just said about both, so either one works. All right, well, Scott is the property representative slash property owner. So we have an opportunity to ask questions if he is comfortable with that. I'm flattered to be on here. Wonderful. Um, this is a proposed rendering of the project. It is located in Severance, um, right near the Dollar General. Um, so right off of Harmony there and right next to the Dollar Store. So in looking at the list, this data, it is just over 9,300 square feet. Right now it is um, uh, intended to be a retail space, but this property would be ideal for a Severance branch. Um, it is currently unbuilt, so it, it is a complete blank canvas. However, it should be noted that the plans have already been approved by the town of Severance. So um, that does expedite the process for us somewhat. In terms of costs, uh, a lease could start at anywhere from $28 to $32 per square feet. There is the option for a build to suit, um, which uh, would be to be determined, um, or uh, we could purchase um, the, the property outright for um, $500 to $600,000 estimated for the lot plus the plans. Um, uh, including the plans, yes. Um, things to consider would be annual maintenance, utilities, et cetera. Um, as we looked at in previous uh, configurations, um, depending upon how we wanted to staff this branch from the kind of low end where it would just be a collections, um, minimal services offered, you'd be looking at staffing of just under $200,000 a year. Um, if we wanted to offer programs or more extensive services, you'd be looking at um, just under $300,000 per year. Again, these are estimates and it really depends upon what the final programming service options are, but that gives you a ballpark of, of what we'd be looking at in addition to um, the physical structural costs. Um, if we were to have a, uh, a second facility, um, we would need a courier service between buildings um, to maximize our collections um, uh, and provide 
mail and things like that. Any questions before I dig into the worksheet here? All right, so moving along, we just recapped um, the scope and the costs. Uh, in terms of service impacts, this is uh, very similar to the uh, proposal we looked at from the town of Severance in terms of service impacts, it would allow us to have a physical location in Severance, which is um, we've identified in our previous conversations as a fast growing community. And one of the, the and if you looked at heat maps of our district, it would be an area with one of the higher rates of growth in our district. The development plans, as I mentioned, have already been approved by the town of Severance, which would um, give more of an ex expedited process um, and if we're looking at service, um, the, the plans right now uh, does have some limited patio seating that would allow for some outdoor access or space for patrons. Um, as I mentioned, a second location would mean additional staffing. And we looked at uh, what that would need for a, a, a space of that size. It would be approximately nine to 14 staff, depending upon the services offered. Um, with costs ranging from approximately $200,000 to $300,000 per year. Um, we uh, believe that if we were to have an additional location um, and we would be a multi-branch system, we would need to consider some sort of centralized hub to allow for more efficient materials processing um, and a courier service between facilities. Uh, and looking at this proposal, um, it is the last commercial property between Severance and Highway 257. So um, as Scott shared with us, it, it's essentially a gateway project um, for the town of Severance. Um, the, the plans um, currently include a drive through so that could be a great addition um, to a branch. There are kind of multiple acquirement options, um, purchase options, uh, you know, depending upon how we want to start that were open to negotiations. Um, the property does back up into a residential neighborhood, but it also has the visibility of being on a main drag of Harmony Road. Um, all, all utilities are on site and that includes fiber. Um, the lot size uh, is a bit smaller than what we've been recommended in terms of uh, for a branch facility. Um, it is just under an acre at 0.83. Um, so that would, uh, because the building takes up the majority of the site uh, or the lot size, um, that would limit us in terms of future expansion. Um, right now, there is not a pedestrian crossing currently by the light, but that obviously could change. Um, there is, well, there is some patio space that is relatively limited. Um, and like I said, the facility would cover the majority of the site. So it limits us in terms of outdoor programming. Um, uh, Scott did indicate in our conversations um, that there is a half an acre lot next door that may be um, an option for purchasing for additional parking. Um, so that is something to consider. In terms of scalability for this proposal, again, the, the, the site is limited for future expansion because the building um, uh, takes up almost the entire lot. In terms of right now, the plans don't include a second floor. So if we um, wanted to modify that for potential future expansion, um, that would take some um, thoughtful uh, practice there. Um, and as I mentioned, there is that half an acre lot next door that may be available. Um, this solution would allow us to expand our reach of service into more communities within the district, um, which would allow us to meet all three of our vision focus areas. Uh, in terms of what our needs and challenges are, um, the size of the building wouldn't necessarily address um, our current staff space and storage constraints at the Windsor Severance Library specifically. Um, it may temporarily expand our collections, but it wouldn't necessarily give us the capacity to have the increased collections storage that we're hoping for um, to be able to uh, uh, have some overflow material. 
And, um, and it does though, however, begin to address the long-term growth in the area. Um, the committee did not feel that there were any questions that needed addressed at this time um, before continuing down this path but I do want to open it up to the floor for any questions or feedback. Um, I so if I'm understanding this right, this option would kind of blend both our need for more administrative space and also public access for materials and programs. This proposal we felt would be ideal for a branch location. So it would be primarily that patron focus space. While there would be some staff space, um, it wouldn't. Uh, so the previous proposals looked at those spaces as like administrative annex and or hub. There would simply not be enough space to support at one level um, at that 9,300 square feet to support a multi-branch administrative hub. So we would need to basically use as much space as possible at 9,300 square feet for patron focus space. So we would still, we would still need an administrative hub on top of this. Okay. But it would be expensive. <laughs> Sorry, Rochelle, go ahead. Oh, I say our needs are getting very expensive. You know, we, we need a lot. We are a very growing community and we have- Two locations. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of, not as, um, when you're looking at a multi-branch uh, system, it's not as simple as just putting up another location. You also have to consider the logistical support that's needed at a higher level to support a multi-branch system. Because otherwise, if you do not have that centralized um, hub, so to speak, as you grow over time, um, the libraries would be operating in isolation and not operating at maximum efficiency. And uh, I believe it wouldn't be the best stewardship of taxpayer dollars. And What's the best sequence and of doing this, over getting that administrative hub first? And then that's a great question. It's, it's a kind of a chicken and egg game is, you know, when the, that, that's what we're looking at now as making those determinations of when would be the point where that would be appropriate, you know, and you, I don't believe you can make that in isolation because, you know, it, it depends on what we do with the Windsor Severance Library or not. If we build a branch in Severance or not, if we, you know, it's, we have to look at this very holistically and then it, then we can, because that all the decisions, as the long range planning committee likes, <laughs> likes to hear so often from me, it's gonna be very squishy until we start digging in and really determining things. So there's a yeah. lot of yes ands right now. <laughs> I got a question too. Yes, mm -hmm. So this is a little more global. So uh, uh, there's two things. One, one of the bigger factors I think here is that we had talked about in previous messages. Uh, meetings and so forth that the opportunity really to own something as an asset versus leasing but i had a i had a more question so in those conversations that we've had before too there were some options and ideas that we had that we might be able to do both isn't ash street basically just a, a, a administrative office there's never going to be a library right so i had thought no. there were some of these conversations that we had that we were going to maybe be able to do uh, some of the things that we need to consider is that we might be able to do both for the same money. And I think that's some of the conversations that we had. The same money being some of the higher options or higher bids or higher costly options, there might be a blend in there to where you can get a better deal and still get the administration office at the same time. So we're not really talking about just two branches because if we go two branches, I thought it was gonna be pretty required to have more administrative space somewhere. Absolutely. <laughs> right? <laughs> So, Absolutely. You know, so we can pull off Astrid as an administrative office and still get another branch somewhere else for the same dollars that we're going to spend on the highest highest option, I guess is what I'm saying. You know, there's some room for thought in there too. Yeah. The advantage of the Astrid one is it's, it's a little more ready to go. 
<clears throat> obviously it would need a lot of cosmetic remodeling, but geez, the, the price is good and it could be brought into action fairly quickly if we're gonna be, you know, focusing then on actually building a, a patron library in Severance. Well, how, I think to your point, Scott, we are gonna be talking to some financial resources as far as what we can do or can't do based upon your know, professional input and we'll be getting back to you. But yeah. my gut, yes, to answer, if we build a Severance branch, we'll need a hub to service our branches. We don't need a hub if we don't build a severance branch. So it's kind of a, yeah. it's a broader you. thought, really. Yeah. I think it's you require both. Yeah. And if you good. think if you think back to our conversations about the severance branch proposal, um, one of the things that we did we did bring up as a possibility is um, overbuilding that facility. So it's so it in, potentially could include that administrative space on a second or third floor. Again, there's a lot of ifs. That's, I mean, that's a lot of brainstorming. We'd have to get to the nitty gritties of reality, but that is a possibility. Yeah. All right. Um, gut check time. I threw the form in the chat, and I know Bud will be sending it out here shortly to you. But if you could take a moment to fill that out, that would be much appreciated. And give me a signal when you are done. <laughs> Should I sustain? <laughs> I think that would probably be best. Thank you. <laughs> Avoid the I got fives across the board, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you, Rochelle. Okay, submitted. Lovely, it looks like we're all done. So last proposal we'll be looking at today was, uh, or is selling the Main Street property. So as you may or may not know, the library owns this parcel of land um, just off of Chimney Park Drive in 392. So just for context, um, 
This is the cemetery down here. And come and go is over here. And then this is Windsor Lake, the big blue blob. So we asked two commercial brokers, um, the two commercial brokers that are also helping us identify potential properties um, to do a market analysis. This is not a formal appraisal. Again, this is just a market analysis, but it will hopefully provide us some perspective. Um, so the lot that we own is 5.76 acres and it is zoned commercial. Um, it was purchased in December of 2016 for $925,000. Um, based on uh, comps in the area, uh, the two brokers believe that an appropriate listing for this could perhaps be 1.2 to 1.6 million dollars. Some costs associated with the selling of this property would be the broker's fees, which would be determined based on um, the particular broker we would want to engage with. Now looking at the worksheet. Uh, this really would have no service impact or staffing impact to us. It's just a plot of land at this point. There are no assets on it other than the dirt itself. Uh, in terms of if we were to sell this land, a pro would be that it would provide some liquid assets that could further some of our other objectives um, and funding those cap capital projects within the district. Um, a few things to consider with this proposal is that land is a finite resource um, and it's extremely limited um, in terms of availability in the Windsor community. Um, it, is not only located within the geographic center of our district, it's a rather large lot size that has, um, would provide amenability for expansion. Um, it's a high visibility location um, in the downtown area. Um, it would uh, limit our potential expansion abilities in the Windsor area if we were to sell this property. Um, and um, one thing to consider that if we were looking at selling this in the immediate future, um, it may not be the best time to sell um, due to the economic impact of COVID-19. Um, another thing to consider is um, with the future legends development happening in the next two years and this plot of land being not too far away from that, um, that may impact things um, one way or the other. Uh, it really has uh, no real impact, selling in particular has no real impact on scalability. Um, how would it meet our mission and vision? It would potentially provide us assets um, to further the mission and vision through other means. Um, and unless the assets uh, were to be used for other capital projects, it really wouldn't um, help us meet or our current needs or address any of our current challenges. Um, so one big question that would need to be addressed before pursuing this option um, would be to evaluate what the current and future markets look like. Um, uh, because as I mentioned, uh, there is a bit of uncertainty in the market and now may not be the most ideal time to sell. All right. So any questions or feedback on this potential solution? Uh, I talked to the owner of the surrounding property and um, he is open to negotiation as far as future development of that area. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Clark. Any other questions or thoughts from the group? If not, I did throw the form uh, into the chat and I'm sure Bud will send that out here shortly via email for those who need it there. Um, one thing to consider is highly likely that the majority of your responses will be not applicable and that's okay.
for our focus is on selling. Yes. That's, that's the term we're focusing on is selling. Correct. And when you're done, be super dramatic about letting me know that you're finished and ready to move on. Submitted. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Rochelle. Thank you, Ron. Frank, are you done, done? All right. All right, so that was the final uh, exploration option we are looking at today. So just want to wrap up with some final, uh, just see if you have any final questions about what was presented today and then dig into discussion and feedback. So do you have any, aside from the things I will be taking back to Mr. Ruff, do you have any questions about any of the proposals that you saw today? All right, seeing none. We will dig into the discussion with the remaining time. Just wanted to open it up. Um, what are your overall thoughts? What's going through your mind right now? Well, let's see. The first question is, which proposals will solve the library's most pressing or current needs? What are the library's most pressing and current needs? Well, if we look back into our presentation, um, we spent some time thinking about that and if I can get there quickly. If you recall from a previous work session, we ranked those in priority order. Almost there. Here are the seven needs and challenges that were identified through the strategic plan and our use data. And uh, they are in priority order as determined by you. I see that were the criteria that was we got from public input during our strategic plan. Is that correct? Yes, these originated both as input from our the public as well as our use data. As far as what? Our use data. So what our numbers were telling us? But have we as a board taken this information and made our own evaluation as to what our needs and challenges are? No, you, um, I, well, you were asked to oh. prioritize them. So one being the most important priority in your mind to seven being the least priority in your mind. So we as a board have not determined what proposals will solve what what our library's most pressing and current needs are. Is that correct? Correct, because you haven't seen them all yet. Okay. So we don't know what our needs are, is what, what I'm I'm trying to get to. Nope, these are the needs that you we've identified. 
So we've identified our needs and challenges. You've put them in priority order of what you feel is most important for us to focus on as we evaluate the different options. We, we as a board, we did that? Yes. It was a sticky note exercise, if you recall back, and I believe it was October, if memory serves. So what on the boards? The I boards. think the confusion, Kathy, is we've identified our needs and challenges. We haven't well, identified the method to address them. Uh, and of the library, what is the consensus of the board regarding the needs of the library? This is what I'm trying to. These are the these are the needs that you've identified in priority what order. I'm looking at right now. This slide that you're looking at right now, yes, are the needs that we'll be looking to fulfill with the solutions that are being presented, which will be complete next work session. You said five, I see seven. Needs and challenges, seven. I must have misspoke if I said five, there are seven. Okay, seven. And the board, as a consensus, came to these this is our needs and challenges. Is that correct? Because I'm, I'm sorry that I don't remember that. No, so this list originated from our strategic plan feedback and our data in the library. And then the board examined that list and ranked it in priority order. So one being the most important to you as a board in, in fulfilling that need, seven being the least important in fulfilling that need. I'm, I'm getting kind of a general consensus, not only from the board, but from patrons that in order to, to achieve number one, number two, number three, number five, we're kind of looking at another branch. And in order to have another branch, we need the administrative space in order to feed that other branch. So I think the sequence needs to be, we lay that groundwork of letting our staff spread out and, and get ready for launching another branch. Although I love the idea of the locations of the Diamond Valley and the East Point, they look kind of expensive. They look like they take a while to do because it's gonna require construction. Um, you know, there's, there's no perfect solution, but Geez, the uh, Ash Street one is kind of ready to go. So if people are getting antsy to, gosh, we got to get this next branch built, having the additional administrative space and an asset on Main Street, um, I think the Ash Street one is kind of appealing. I like our land that we have right now and I hate to see it go. I just don't know how we can use it down the line because we know what that would cost to do. And the voters said no. So as much as I hate to see it go, I, I don't think now is an ideal time. Maybe if we could hold out a little while longer and use our other assets to get that administrative space to lay the groundwork for building another branch. Uh, Rochelle, you keep referring to Ash Street as a, a library branch. It, oh, no, no, no. As an administrative location uh, to allow us the infrastructure to have more staff space and then um, support another. Uh, isn't Ash Street also an option just to rent without having to go through all the infrastructure or without having to buy it and pay for it and do all the tenant improvements? And It would still require some tenant improvements. But that's a landlord deal. Uh, there do you have an allowance, if I recall, of $10 per square foot for tenant improvement allowance. Yeah, I saw that. I would imagine that it would exceed that um based on the condition that i saw but it was mainly it and and but and casey oh and ron dunworth you were all there it felt to me and like it's mostly cosmetic things but we don't rather... know about that building if we want to use it for excess material storage is whether or not the floors will support that and so you would have to have an engineering evaluation to see if you could put steel shelving and materials on that steel shelving, um, or would it require a whole lot, I mean, an, an additional amount of money to refinish it? Um, and 
Kendra being the real estate person suggested that yes, we could do that and it should not be that expensive simply because it's just adding support into the underground. Okay. Under but, it, so. you would, but you would still have to have an assessment. And then yes, the rest is cosmetic. I mean, it is right now divided up into doctors examining type rooms, which isn't gonna function well. Um, so yes, you would have to do some renovations on, on the building and those would come with a cost. Didn't Dan, didn't Dan the builder come in and say that the normal commercial thickness of uh, cement now is adequate to hold the weight? Didn't he come in on his presentation and say that? I don't know what the floor is like there. Um, I mean, you'd have to have someone look at the building and see how it's constructed. We didn't, we know it's not on, you know, there's no basement, but I also don't think it was um, right on a concrete slab. So I don't know if it's got a crawl space under it. You would have to have someone come and yeah. take a look at it. It does have a crawl space. Yeah, but I think normal, what you were saying is normal construction, like in the last 10 years or so, 15, right. you know, recent time is already strong enough. Hey, can I make one more stat here and then I'll back off here a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, if I can go back to the land for a second. I personally, I think it's a beautiful piece of property. You know, it's really key and it's really great. But Ron, here, correct me if I'm wrong, Ron. Just on a couple of stats, so that means you bought bought it for three dollars and sixty eight cents a foot square foot on that. And if we can say it's worth a million five, which I think is worth every bit of that, you know, that's going to sell it for about five ninety seven a foot. So we're making about two thirty a foot on that thing. But I'm pointing that out because we're selling that property, key property on Main Street for $597 if we get our million and a half dollars versus that one over there at Doug's Diner, which we just decided that, that other per square foot was anywhere from eight to fourteen dollars a foot that you're paying just to buy the land. Right? Am I wrong, yeah. Rob? No, I think you're right. So the only thing that could be the difference is the infrastructure, right? And it, you know, and that means he's got utilities to that pad. But I think on Main Street, they got to be pretty close. You know, I was just saying, I don't know. I, it might be worth more than five bucks, $5.90 a foot. I, well, I also think you have to think of, you know, and that is correct. That is correct, Scott. That this plan is, is also not just an immediate plan, but for the future. And that property, you know, we have, uh, as Ron, Clark said he had talked to the developer who is interested. Uh, Katie and I have had some conversations with Eric Lucas, who's in charge of parks, recreation and public works. There's opportunities for collaboration. And so it may not be the wisest thing to sell that property at this time, because for the future, you're not gonna be able to buy land in the future at that price and the building you currently have in Windsor is not adequate for the current population. And you're gonna to need to do something as the population of Windsor grows, just as you have to do something as the population of Severance grows. So you don't wanna be short-sighted and say, oh, wow, we have this 17,000 square foot building in Windsor and that's all hunky-dory and great. Um, but like, you know, in 20 years, the population of Windsor will also be much larger and you may need to think about doing something different and a partnership of some kind. So this plan is not just for next year or for 2023, this goes 10 years out. Think of what Windsor is gonna look like, think about what your assets are and what you need to do for the future of the community, not just a knee jerk, well, this is what we need today. Well, you might be able to preserve, you might be able to do a deal with that guy, with whoever that is down the road here and cut yourself out maybe a quarter acre or half acre for your own administration building down the road right there on Main Street and still make money on selling the property. So, so I, I think all of those things are in play and as we look at it, we have to decide, yeah. but yeah. keeping a property that's worth a lot is an expense from the standpoint that we have other projects we have to accomplish with the resources we have. So we have to take it all into consideration and yes, right here, West Greeley, which is our territory, and Severance, which is our territory, we have to look at those. In terms of immediate need, we're already behind the eight ball in regards to providing square footage for the community. And so
so we can I'd like to I'd like to keep the property for 10 or 12 years. I was also just pointing out that that Doug's Improperize and use the asset. Yeah. You know, consideration. All done, Katie. I'm sorry. No, you're good. This is the this is this is just the whole just, point. Just discussing. Yeah. So, were there any proposals that stood out to you from what we discussed today? Right, you know, today. Yeah. Um, just as a interesting question, we're, it looks like there's quite a few proposals for administrative buildings before um, opening a second library. I understand there's efficiencies when you are multi-branch to have an admin building, but I'm curious why that would come first before you go multi-branch. It seems cart before horse. I, I'm trying to understand this. I think that has yet to be determined a line in the sand. I think there there was discussion of which would come first. There has not been a declaration of of one or the other unless I, I missed something big here. No, no, no. It's just it seems that that's one of those big questions. It's just oh. a question to be asked is yeah. think about like what's the timing of, of when that happens, you know, you know, is it possible to scrape along for better words, you know, for a year or two, and then after a branch is done in Severance or West Greeley or wherever, you know, when, that's the whole point of this plan is thinking through what are the needs, how we set up the district for success. You know, if we do this, then we need to do that kind of a thing. There's a lot of if thens. Well, you're, not, you're not throwing out simultaneous either. It could be simultaneous. Yeah. If we got the prices right, Frank, you know, all the way across the board and everything just kind of fell into our place and we're still ahead, it's very likely that you guys can work it out, both of them at the same time. It could be absolutely it, correct. You know. And next month we'll be getting more information about what our options are and what our capacity may or may not be um, to help provide some clarity about, I believe it'll provide clarity in terms of timing and, and what solutions may or may not be feasible or not. Any proposal that stood out to you? Any that kind of raised some questions or concerns? I think we can eliminate the big one, right? The big no, Scott, if, you, if, you went back and, if you went back and told the Windsor board that you wanted to take down 80% of that building and we took 20, then, <laughs> you know, we, we wouldn't eliminate it. It's... If the partners are right, if the price is right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just the maintenance alone is a nightmare, though. Imagine that. I, I mean, your team members have told us that you guys are hurting for square footage. The police department is, the rec center is, uh, even in, uh, even just build in a new rec center, just build a new police department. <laughs> well, I, I mean, all I'm saying is we yeah. all need square footage. We all need space and it's, but you guys aren't ready to, to discuss it. It's, it hasn't even gone to the board or to you guys from, from your operations people yet. So they don't mm -hmm. know what they want. And the, fire chief, the fire chief has a, a pretty good list of what he's looking for, um, but you know he, they can't do it on their own either right now because they're building a new fire station. And so, you know, he's interested because they're out of space too, and he's talking about administrative office space, but but he doesn't want to commit to anything 
until th they know which direction we might be going. And then he'd be very interested in sitting down and discussing things with us. But until this is a we, real chicken and the egg thing, and I mean, uh, well, until we know what we want to do, until our plan is sort of in place, um, I, I think you know, then they would be interested in sitting down with us and saying, like, okay, here's how it would work. But right now, they're they want to break ground on their new fire station in April, so. Um, that's their priority right now. And if we said to him, yes, this is the way we want to go, then the next step would be to get somebody in there and start designing the space, but we're not ready to do that yet either. And so I think it's good that we're having a conversation, but I don't think we're ready either to say this is what we want to do. And I think the rec center is probably the least ready to commit. Um, because they're looking at building possibly a new police station and then using the current police station for something else, but they haven't gone through a complete facilities plan yet either. So they're in the midst of that. So there's a lot of moving pieces. And and the co-located space option is going to be, as as we kind of discussed early on, that's going to be one that's likely a, a more of a longer term thing just because of the nature of government entities and, and all the when you have multiple people involved and especially multiple government entities, things move at a slower pace. Bill, you had your, your flash in your fingers. I want to say that uh, as a work session, we were looking at different options and talking about the pros and cons of the options. Uh, we really shouldn't be uh, considering if we're going to exclude or, or hone in on anything uh, to the exclusion of others at this time. Thank you for that reminder. We well, hear a few more prompts for you. There are a particular pro proposal that you um, think will solve our most pressing needs, or is there a proposal that has been identified today? Not overall, not ready to look at all everything on the table. Is there a proposal today that you think will resonate especially well with the public? Uh, and Frank, I apologize. Is that an old hand raise or a new hand raise? I'm just not seeing it. I, I'm not intentionally ignoring you. <laughs> uh, no, that's an old hand raise. I have to uh, okay. find that and kill that. <laughs> okay, just making sure. So I, 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 I go back, I hesitate now with Bill's comment there that we're not alienating anybody or anything, but we are still trying to process all these different options and the pros and cons, right? So sensibly, we got like a bunch, we got four or five options tonight. Astry one is not an option for a library. So that's only for, a, only for an administrator, but the big 27,000 square foot building, unless you can get everyone else going around, I don't think that's an option. I think diner, the diner one is pretty darn expensive. Um, would that be for a library? Would that be thinking for a library or the administration library for the diner one? No, that would be an administrative space. That's administrative. So the only really library ones really are the big industrial building or the plane or really we keep it really is the, is the deal with the uh, severance. The industrial one is considered for a library. Yeah. Is that the only one, really? I mean, that one in the flame and severance, really. Is what no. the, in, the industrial building is not for a library. That's shared <laughs> administrative space. Oh, my bad. So really, as far as, so so two different thoughts, really. Which one is going to be the best building for the administration building? And which one's going to be best for the potential library? And can we do them both by still maintaining our asset of the land? I, I think, I think public know. perception, I think there are a lot of people who would like to see us sell the land, but I'm not sure that they're aware of these issues of, wow, it's already appreciated in value and it might continue to. So I think that part of it isn't very well known right now. Well, that's a given. Going up in value is a given and value is, de is undefined yet because that value could be like Ann talked about it in joint venturing with other people. It could be a bigger social value as well, but it's sure not going down anywhere. 
Yeah, I would, I would just encourage you as you're thinking through some of the responses to these questions um, to focus just on, on these proposals in isolation today, not that we're looking at figuring out what the final solution would be or solutions period. We're just, we're just talking about what we saw today. Because we'll regroup at a later date to talk about everything in the in entirety in the holistic mindset. So were there any proposals that you felt would resonate with the public? If it's all administrative, I, I think the public would just want to see us do this in a, a economical fashion. Mm -hmm. Because most of what we're talking about today was administrative. Correct. Any of these proposals specifically work towards addressing our growing communities the best? You know, I hate to say this, but there's still so many unknowns to each to each proposal that to answer that question would be they are. impossible simply because um, we, we don't know yet. And I, I think we're going to have to take a look at proposals for new libraries and for administrative space and do what ifs and trade offs and, and define a path that's best count our dollars and see what we can do and then propose it to the board. I, I agree the difficult questions to answer. You know, we have two proposals here. We looked at administrative buildings and we looked at potential libraries. So which, which serves the need of the growing community best? I don't know. Do they need an admin building more or do they need a branch library more? Well, we need both. I know. How do we address it? And how do we not talk about it with these questions, you know? I, I think our number one priority should be to serve the community's needs by providing libraries for the people first. And then also followed quickly with, we can provide more library space by providing administrative facilities offsite as well. You know, that also adds that equation. We saw that in the proposal. If we move people out of the main library, we'd have more space for more. If that's your answer, Ron, then you got two proposals on the table. You got the severance deal or you got the flame deal. That's the only two proposals proposal I'm seeing that are a library. Right now. You haven't seen them all. So, <laughs> so just hang on. <laughs> you still got right. a month of options. Well, you're you asked us to evaluate on what's been on the table tonight. Are, yeah. you saying, are you saying there's more options we don't know about yet? Yes, that is exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> well, that's not even fair to have an opinion on these things without knowing all the options. I think you're already working towards how, how to fit all the jigsaw pieces together, Scott. And uh, well, tonight we're just talking about um, in isolation. We're not talking about the final solution, the plan. Um, I would just encourage us to to focus on what has been presented. You know. So we, we've seen presentations tonight, and we saw the severance presentation before. So, if if you're asking the sum of those two meetings, is that what we're talking about, or just today's meeting? Because I can't answer your question with just today's stuff. All right, that's fair. Okay. Right. Any other thoughts? I know we're running a little over on time. I, I think you've provided a lot of information for thought, you know, and I really appreciate the amount of effort you and the team have put into this. It's excellent. I think nobody can question any decisions we come up with because we've, we've checked all the boxes and we've kicked all the tires and the opportunities and potential. So I think we're ready for whatever the next phase is. And it might be interesting if, um, I mean, I know what some of the budget numbers look like, but uh, I guess just to put down the numbers of dollars that we're playing with, because I mean, obviously 8 million, I'm positive is well beyond this library's ability to fund. But what, um, what I said earlier is me to Frank, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but just to, to short circuit, because I've, I've got to go somewhere. Uh, Ann is setting up a meeting with a financial institution which can help us decode what, not only what the dollars we have, but the dollars we can afford out of our annual uh, revenue to apply to project or projects. 
So we will have those numbers soon. Next work session. Next we'll work session. Yeah. The last of the, so coming up next, in the January 28th meeting, we'll have uh, an update on where we're at as a long range planning committee. Then at the February 11th work session, we'll be tying up the loose ends on the remaining um, uh, options. So that would be what uh, there are, what options there are in terms of the existing building expansion upward and or outward. Um, the one large facility conversation, co-located or shared facility options and developer partnership options. Um, once we kind of put a bow on the different exploration options, um, we'll be joined uh, by Stiffle, Stiffle, right? And I always mess this up. <laughs> and like Ron mentioned, um, we'll be presenting from a staff perspective, not only a recap of where we are sitting financially, but then Stiffle will come in after having examined our financials um, to provide what the different funding options are available to us, given our financial position. And that'll answer the question about what we have available to address these projects with Frank, hopefully. Yep, that's the goal. All right. Well, any final questions for me or any other as, as we've been looking at items? Um, is there anything that you'd like us to um, refresh our memories on, pull refresh data on, any any questions that have been percolating in your mind? Yeah. Hey, I'd like to just say thanks for putting up with me tonight. I know I might have stepped over the line asking no, too many questions. Not at all. You know, this is a group discussion. It was, kind of a, it was kind of a weird line for me to walk tonight, you know. But, your, uh, your, your expertise and professionalism is fully appreciated, Scott. Thank but you. But I thought it was a pretty good meeting tonight. So good job, Katie. And good job. Thank you. Thanks, Katie. Okay, if that's uh, all the discussion, um, is everyone okay with adjourning the meeting at 7.38? Let's call it a night and meet up on the 28th. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. Bye. Later. Take care, gang. <laughs>